Good morning. Welcome to Warner Temple. We are honored that you are here. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Glad those of you who are watching us by way of social media. Thank you for coming. Would you share this with others? Let others know that you're on the temple. We want you to be a part of our ministry. Let me just share a quick few announcements. Today at 3 o'clock, the Home Missions will have a program. It's a Zoom program. Reverend Nathaniel Johnson will be the speaker. We offer Christian sympathy to John Tyson and his family. We funeralized his mother on yesterday. We also offer Christian sympathy to Mrs. Bernice McKinney, who lost her husband, Gillian. He will be funeralized on Wednesday at 5.30 at the Shaw Funeral Home. We're remembering, we're practicing social distancing, and only 50 people can be in the building at one time. We also offer Christian sympathy to Mrs. Shirley Wooten and family. They lost her husband and their dad, uh, Mr. William Wooten Sr. He passed away on yesterday. I want to thank all of those who continue to help us with the vaccines, as well as those who are helping us to get things ready for the kingdom. Lastly, I want to share a thank you note from my son, Walter, and my new daughter-in-law, Nook. She writes, they write for all the prayers and gifts Nook and I are so very happy and grateful to have a wonderful, supportive system behind us. We are looking forward to making you proud. Love you all. Thanks again, Nook and Walter. So we thank you for that. I'm going to open in prayer. The choir is going to sing, and we're going to beat the rain. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the privilege to be in this place. We ask you now to move in your own miraculous way. May the words of our mouths and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. For, Lord, you are our strength and you are our redeemer. Amen. to the Lord for surely he is good. I want to share with you from a familiar passage of scripture, Mark chapter 10, verses 13 through 16. It's a passage of scripture oftentimes that we hear when pastors are baptizing or christening a child. And we find these words, Matthew chapter 10, I mean Mark chapter 10, verses 13 through 16. Then they brought little children to him that he might touch them. But the disciples rebuked those who bought them. But when Jesus saw it, he was greatly displeased and said to them, let the little children come and forbid them not, for such is the kingdom of God. Assuredly, I say to you, everyone who does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will may not enter in. And he took them in his arms, put his hands upon them, and blessed them. I want to talk just for a few moments from the subject entitled, What About the Children? What About the Children? Father, would you let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight? Move Clifford out of the way so that we might hear from you. And then when we leave, we could go home and live better lives. Speak now, my Father, for thy servant hears and he will obey. Amen. What about the children? <clears throat> I grew up in Rockville, Maryland, and I grew up during a time when if you played baseball, and we played baseball at this school called Seven Locks Elementary School, it was about a mile from where we lived. And whenever you played a baseball game, there was always a line of people going to see who's playing. 
And we'd line up and we'd walk one mile just to watch a little league game. And oftentimes people would ask, who's playing today? And they would say, it doesn't matter. Because we, what we understood in my neighborhood, in my community, when I grew up, everybody's child was everybody's child. Where I grew up, everybody would, would support children and they would always just show up. And yet, you know what I find out in life? I'm finding now in life that there are too many parents and too many children who feel isolated. They feel like they're by themselves. They feel like they got to raise their children by themselves and they're in this struggle and in this battle all by themselves. You know, it's a challenge because they have needs, but they're not, they're scared to ask you. Or we have resources and we don't share our resources with those who have needs. I just come by to tell you this morning that parents with children, you are not alone because they're not just your child, they're ours as well. And so Mark chapter 10 is a familiar passage of scripture. And when I used to read it, I, before I studied it this week, I would read it and, and it's, it was a beautiful passage. It was like really calm and Jesus takes them in his arms and he blesses them. But when you read it carefully, when, when you dig into the scriptures, you'll realize that Jesus was ticked. Jesus was greatly displeased. He was angry. He, he was mad because he understood that, that all children belong to God. And he was worried and afraid and scared because the disciples mm, wanted to hold him back. Can I offer this note to you? Our children need us. All of our children need us. Now listen, here, take this home with you. Listen, don't be satisfied just because yours made it. Mm. Don't be satisfied just because yours got out good. Don't, don't settle and say, well, I've done my part because mine have done this and they're doing this and they're doing great. No, you got to understand if it had not been for the grace of God, your child, my child could be on the front page if it had not been but for the grace of God and those who reached out when we needed help. So, so don't be satisfied simply because yours made it. Reach out and help others. Speak into the lives of the children that God places in your path. Speak into the lives of the children in your neighborhood. Speak into the lives of the children who walk in your life. Speak into the lives of the children who you have contact with. We all need to be involved in raising our children. So, the Bible says, and they brought young children to him that he might touch them. Wow, what a great idea, parents, to bring your children to Jesus. Wow, what a novel thought. What good thinking. What the right idea. Yes, bring your children to Jesus that, that he might touch them. We, we've got to continue to bring our children to Jesus. How do you, how do, you do that? Oh, it's, it's more than just driving in a parking lot. <laughs> it's more than just coming to a building and worshiping on Sunday morning. How do I bring my children to Jesus? Well, you bring them to Jesus by you teach them who he is. You, you teach them. It's, it's our responsibility as parents to raise our children in the fear and ammunition of God. It's our responsibility to talk to our children children about who he is and his character and his personality. It's our responsibility to raise our children in a God-fearing way. How do you do that? You do it by modeling a Christian life. You do it by talking to them about who Jesus is. You do it by teaching them how to pray. You do it by modeling your life of prayer. You do it by sharing with them how you read the scriptures and how you open the scriptures unto them. You do it by demonstration. Mm. Because see, believe it or not, children learn quite a bit by just watching us. Oh, they learn quite a bit by just listening to us. They, they know how to pray because they hear us pray. They know how to trust in God because they've seen us trust in God. They know how to depend on Him because they see us in times of need depending on Him. 
Mm. So we ought to continue to bring our children to Jesus. But what's, what's ironic in this passage of Scripture, Mark chapter 10, is that the disciples started to block them. The disciples said to the parents who were bringing them to Jesus, no, don't, don't, don't do it. Now, no one in Scripture seems to tell us why they thought Jesus didn't have time for children. No one in Scripture seems to give us an explanation as to what they were thinking about. Maybe, perhaps they were thinking Jesus is too busy. Perhaps they were thinking maybe Jesus needs to be about doing some other things. And he doesn't really have time for children because children ought to be seen and not heard. Maybe, maybe they were thinking something crazy like this, but they blocked children from getting to Jesus. Mm. Question I want to ask you. Are you a blocker? Are you blocking children from getting to Jesus? Mm. Are you blocking them by the way you live? Are you blocking them from seeing Jesus by the attitude that you walk around with? Are you blocking children from seeing Jesus by the words that come out of your mouth? Be careful! Because you may just be blocking children from a relationship with Jesus Christ. And so when I read this passage and I studied it in some commentaries, they all said that Jesus was angry. The Bible says he was displeased. He was mad. He was cooked. He was burning up. He, he, he you know, because the Bible says, listen, if, if you really want to get Jesus' goat, all you got to do is harm one of his children. Mm. If you want to get his goat, all you got to do is mess with little kids. Remember in Matthew chapter 18, verse 6, Jesus says, Whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin, it would be better for him to have had a millstone wrapped around his neck and that he was tossed and drowned in the depth of the sea. Oh, you see, if you really want to get Jesus mad, mess with his little people. Mm. If you want to get him angry, mess with those who love him. And you understand the disciples didn't get it. I don't understand how they didn't get it, but they didn't get it. They didn't see that Jesus loves the little children. They didn't understand that Jesus wanted children to be around him. I don't understand how they didn't get it. But you got to be careful because we may be blocking children from Jesus. And so Jesus tells them, don't do that. Let them come. Suffer the little children to come unto me. Forbid them not. Get out of the way. Stop blocking kids from the kingdom. Stop blocking them from me. Let them come to me. Mm. And he reaches out and he holds them in his hands. He touches them and he blesses them. As a matter of fact, some commentary said that even as he blessed them, he kind of blessed them with an attitude. Because <laughs> you got to remember, he was human. And he was angry. He was upset. Okay? And, and we need to remind ourselves that, that our children aren't an accident. Mm. That, that God allowed them to be born at this time and in this right place. Let me just stop right here and say, listen, you're in the right place. You're at the right time. It's not a mistake. God didn't make a mistake. God didn't, wasn't confused. God knew when you would be born. He knew the circumstances you'd fall into. And God says, you're in the right place. And so we need to remind our children and we need to encourage them. We need to love them more. We need to explain to them that there's nothing that has happened to you or will happen to you that God can't fix. We need to remind our children that you are loved by God. We need to remind our children that, that you are special, that you have been chosen by God for this time. We need to remind our children that there's no one else like you. You are thumb body special. You are, have, have, have fingerprints that nobody else in the universe has or will have. You have DNA that nobody else has like you. Why? Because you are special. Mm. You're fearfully and wonderfully 
made. And so for parents and adults who perhaps feel like you're going to give up on your children, I've got some suggestions for you. Listen, real quickly. Look, take, take a break. Let me tell you, walk away for a moment. Phone a friend. Take a deep breath. Maybe stop counting backwards from 20 to, to 1. Take and count the, the things around you. Look at the colors in the room. Walk outside. Drink some water or a little wine, whatever your case might be. But let me remind you, don't give up on our children because our children need us. And so Jackie Bruton, Jackie Bruton, my friend out of Atlanta, Jackie Bruton, who writes seven things that, that guys want girls, girls to know about sex, love, and relationships. Jackie Bruton, who talks to teens, thousands of teens a year. Jackie Bruton reminds us that April is also Sexual Assault Awareness Month. And she says, so before you send your teens out, before they go places, make sure you ask some tough questions. You ask some questions like, what's going on? Where are you going? Who's going to be there? Who else will be there? Who's going to be at the sleepover? You visit the house. You visit the home. Make sure you let them know that they are special and chosen by God. Mm. Lastly, lastly, as I take my umbrella, Get ready to take my seat, says the old Baptist preacher. You got to understand that sexual assault grows in silence. You got to listen to your children. Listen with your ears, your eyes, mm, and your heart. Instead of doing all the talking, wait. Ask yourself, wait, why am I talking? Listen to your children. Pay attention to what's going on. Ask them the tough questions. Where are you going? When are you coming back? Where? Who's going to be there? Who else is there? Where are they going to have the sleepover? Who's going to be in the room? Go by the house. Ask the other parents. Do that kind of crazy stuff in order to take care of the children that God has placed in your care. I want to ask you, when was the last time you told the children in your life you love them? When was the last time you said to the children in your life, you're special, you've been chosen by God? When was the last time you said to the children in your life that you're beautiful, not just on the outside, but on the inside as well? When was the last time you reminded them that they have been chosen by God? for a time like this. News flash. News flash. Listen, our children will be all right. News flash. Our children will make it because God hasn't given up on them. News flash. God has an awesome plan for our children. News flash. Never write them off. Never quit. Never wave a white handkerchief, as in, I surrender. Never, when it comes to your children, throw in the towel. And I thought about that and I said, well, maybe, maybe the reason it's not working for me is because this is a maroon towel. And you, you know that they always throw in a white towel. And I got this white towel out of my house, and it's got my initial on it. It's, this is a real towel, um, Stan. This ain't no cheap towel, man. This got my initials because, see, oftentimes some of the stuff that, that we go through has my initials on it. Mm. Some of the trials that I have to face are special to me. Some of the tribulations and all the things that God allows to happen in my life comes right to me. It's mine. It's special to me. And oftentimes when I go to throw in my towel, God throws it back. Mm. Every time I throw in the towel, God throws it back. So what are you doing now, Cliff? Well, here's what I do when I feel like giving up, when I feel like quitting, when I feel like God is too much. What I do, I start looking around. I look around for my towel. Because surely as I've thrown it in, God throws it back. Oh, it's not over. It's not over. It's not over. It's not over. God says you can win. Mm. How do you know it's not over? Well, because 
that boy is still breathing. How do you know it's not over? Because he got up this morning still raising hell. How do you know it's not over? Because God says it's not over because I've thrown back the towel. God says it's not over because he's still breathing. And as long as there's breath, God says, I'm giving you hope. Ah, uh, so what about the children? Make sure that you know you tell them you love them. Make sure that you remind them that it's not over. Make sure that you remind them that they're special, that they're chosen by God, fearful and wonderfully made. And lastly, it doesn't matter whether you're trying to wave a white handkerchief. Hey, you may be trying to throw in a maroon towel, or maybe you've got a specially designed white towel that you're trying to throw in. Jesus says, look, I'm giving it back to you because it's not over. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for reminding us that it's not over. Thank you, God, for reminding us that I'm not going to give up on our children. Not one moment, not one of them, not any of them. It doesn't matter what they say in the newspaper. It doesn't matter how many things they've gone through, all this stuff that they've been in and out of. You know what, God, I've learned that when you take them in, you bring them out. And every time you bring them out, it's a reminder that I've got a plan for them. I've got a special assignment for them. Mm. And so I pray for parents who are struggling right now. Parents who said, Pastor, I've thrown in monogram towels. I've thrown in red towels, blue towels, green towels. I've thrown in the kitchen sink. And every time I do, God seems to keep throwing it back in my face. Why? Because Jeremiah 29, 7 says, I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. Plans to prosper you. Mm. I've got plans for your children to cause them to grow and to become what God wants them to be. Lord, may the words of our mouth and the meditation of our heart be acceptable in your sight. For you are our strength and you are our redeemer. Amen. Amen. Let me remind you, we have Sunday school at 1115. It'll appear on the screen. We have Bible studies on Wednesdays at 12 and Wednesdays at 645. You're welcome and invited. Please note all the announcements that we've shared with you earlier. God bless you. Thank you for being a part of the Warner Temple family. If by chance you want to give your life to the Lord, today's a great day because he hasn't given up on you. He's saying, I'm throwing the towel back to you. Yeah, I've got a plan for you. If you're breathing, he's got a plan for you. If you want to surrender your life, call the church office. We'd love to talk with you. If you want to become a member of a church, this church or a church where you are, call us and let us know, and we'll in turn make that happen for you. Lastly, if you have any prayers or anything you want us to pray for or pray about, we'll ask you to let us know, and we'll pray for that as well. I'm going to close with this closing prayer. God, we thank you for, again, allowing us to be in this place. We ask you now to continue to bless us and keep us in your care. We lift up those bereaved families that we've named earlier. Um, Johnny's mom. Um, we lift up Ms. Wooten and we lift up Ms. McKinney. We pray, God, that you will bless them and hold them in the palm of your hands. Bless our children and keep us in your care. And now unto him that is able to keep you from falling. And he's able to present you faultless before his presence with exceeding great joy. To the only wise God, our Father, be glory and majesty dominion and power, both now and forevermore. Amen. God bless you.